Hi, I'm Scott McLean from TranceMusicMastery.com, and in this video I'm going to go through the steps necessary to program a patch called High Roller, which was programmed by Adam Sabo for this course. And let me go ahead and play it at this time. <laughs> Okay, and if I bring up the MIDI sequence, got it behind here. It's actually just one note, believe it or not. So I'm just holding the A note down here. It's just playing A. And what's happening is this patch uses the arpeggiator and step sequencer for, or uh, provided by Zebra 2 right here. So we will be going through and programming that as we go through this patch. So let me go ahead and bring up the sound map. And Adam Sabo says, in some trance tracks, to fatten up the bass, another high bass is layered on top of the sub bass. This bass has the low end removed to prevent it from clashing with the sub frequencies from the other bass, but has the mids and highs boosted to make it stand out with the sub bass. It's usually several detuned saws with varying octave. So let's take a look. This patch uses three single saw oscillators and they are mixed together and they go through a filter and in this case it's a cross modulation filter and the cutoff frequency is being modulated by envelope 2 and the ARP sequencer modulation as well. And so with envelope 2 we've got a zero attack medium decay, sustain is at zero, and a fast release. And also note that this envelope is using the variable slope mode and is more concave than linear. And the output of the filter flows into the amplifier and the volume is being modulated by envelope one with a zero attack, medium decay, sustain at 80% and a fast release. And then the output of that flows through the effects and into the main output. So let me walk through the effects next. So the first thing that the signal is going to go through in the effects block is the EQ, an EQ1. And this EQ is configured to have a plus 3 dB boost near 175 hertz with a low shelf filter. Then a bandpass with a 4.5 dB boost near 550. And then another bandpass with a plus 5 dB boost near 3 kilohertz, and then finally a 1.5 dB cut near 4 kilohertz. And then it flows through a second EQ with a minus 3 dB low shelf near 160 hertz, then a plus 1.5 dB boost near 800 hertz, then a plus 10.5 dB boost near 5.5 kilohertz, and then a high shelf cut of 2 dB near 17.5 kilohertz. Then that flows into a delay. This is a stereo delay with a left time of one quarter note and a right time of one eighth dotted note. And it's mixed at a 26% dry wet mix. And then that flows into a reverb with approximately a two to three second reverb tail with low dampening for a bright reverb sound. And then that finally that goes out to the main output. All right, that's it for the sound map. Let's go ahead and program the patch. Okay, and I'm starting with the initialize patch. So if I play it right now, we hear the familiar sound. And the first thing that I want to do is, this is another patch that was programmed in the 2.3 mode. So let me go ahead and select that. And I don't think it's anything special. I think probably what happened is while Adam was creating the sounds, he ended up upgrading to the latest version. But in order to preserve the parameter step-by-step -step compatibility, I'm going to select 2.3, the Zebra 2.3 mode. Okay, now the next thing to do is boost the volume to 100. And then now let's go ahead and look at the global section. So we're going to set the voice mode to arpeggiator. I'm going to go ahead and configure that now. So now let's go over to the ARP sequencer. And for this, what we want to do is set up 
a alternating octave sequence, all right? So that's 12 semitones. We're going to leave the slide off. The octave, we'll set that to zero. The steps, we want to set that, leave that at 16. The ARP loop, leave it in the forward direction. The ARP order by note. And then ARP sync, we're going to set that to 16th notes. And now I'm going to go through and configure the semitones on each step. So first, we'll start with a minus 12, so one octave down. We'll leave the second step at zero. The third step, go up an octave. The next step, leave that at zero. The fourth step, we'll go down an octave. And then the next step, zero. The third step, up an octave. The next step, zero. Now we are here at eighth step, or third beat, and the start of the third beat. And that's going to be down one octave. And the next step is zero. And then up one octave. And then the next step is zero. And then finally at the start of the fourth beat, down one octave. Okay, the next step is going to be minus two semitones. And then the next one is going to be plus ten. And then the last one is going to be plus three. So now with those settings in place, it currently sounds like this. All right, the next thing to do is configure the gate for each step. So I'm going to go through and configure that. And basically what Adam has done is left the first step at its default value, which is two. The second step is three. The third step gate will be four. And then the last step in the beat is going to be going back to three. And it'll just continue to alternate like that. So it'll start with two, three, four, three and then back to two again. And then we'll set the next one to three, four, three, leave it at two, three, four, three, leave that one at two, three, four, three. And so now it sounds like this. And so what that gate is doing is it's, it's causing the notes to vary in length from one another which just adds another element of, of variation and, and makes it a little more interesting. Now we are going to use the ARP mod, but I'll do that when I set up the filter, so I'm not going to configure that right now. So let's go ahead and set up oscillator 1. And so for the oscillator effects, we're going to set it to fundamental, which will help reinforce the fundamental, and set the level to 24. And then for the second effect, we're going to use Brilliance and set that level to 50. And I'm going to go ahead and bring up the global volume output, output level. So let me do that now. We're going to want to bring this up to like 152. And for the mixer, we're going to bring the volume of oscillator 1 up to 200. And that's it for oscillator 1. Let's add oscillator 2. And for oscillator 2, we want to tune that up one octave. So I'm going to set tune. I'm going to set that to 12. And set detune to 11. And for the mixer volume, we're going to set that to 200. And for oscillator effects, we're going to add fundamental. Set that to 32. And Brilliance, set that to 60. And let me go ahead and zoom in on this. Okay. 
Next, we want to add oscillator 3. And this is going to be tuned up two octaves, so we want to set tune to 24. And detune to minus 12. And now set oscillator effects. We're going to add fundamental. And set that to 20. And then bring the mixer volume up to 132. Okay, now that we have the oscillators in place, let's go ahead and set the envelope. So for this envelope, we're going to bring attack up slightly to 6. Bring decay down to 32 to 30, but I'm actually going to bring sustain level down first. I'm going to set that to 32. And then now bring the decay down to 30. Okay, next we want to add the cross-modulation filter, XMF1. And we're going to leave the default types, type 1 and type 2. The routing is the default. So it's a low-pass four-pole filter, single routing. Type 2 is the same, and it's in the XMF character. And I want to bring cutoff down to 12. And then we're going to modulate this with ENV2, and I'll bring that amount up to 96. And before we set those settings, let's go ahead and bring overload up to 2.0. And then we're also going to go ahead and add the ARP mod as a modulator on cutoff as well. And I'm going to set that to 102. And right now that won't have any effect because we have not made any changes to the ARP modulator. We'll do that after we do ENV2. So let's set up ENV2. And for this, we're going to change its slope to V slope. And I'll leave it at linear right now and go ahead and make the changes and then I'll... I'll demonstrate how making this more concave, what effect that has. So attack will leave at zero. Decay time, we're going to bring that down fairly low at 22.5. And sustain, we're going to bring down to 17. So let me go ahead and do that. Remember, this envelope, too, is modulating the cutoff frequency of the cross-modulation filter. Okay, I'm going to bring sustain down to 17. And decay down to 22.5. And I'll bring release up to 79. And I think because of the short release here, I don't think this has much effect on the overall sound. It could come into play when I move this around, but uh, right now with the linear, it doesn't seem to have any effect. All right, let's go to a more concave slope. Okay, and it's set at 82, or actually minus 82. And so that's pretty much the main modulation with envelope 2 on the cross-modulation filter. The next thing that we need to do is go to the ARP sequencer, and we're going to use ARP mod here because we've tied it 
we've had, we're using ARP mod to modulate the cutoff frequency on the filter as well as envelope two. So let me go ahead and configure this. So we want to set each of the four steps per beat uh, the following way. We're going to set the first one, the first step, to 40, positive 40. The next one is going to be at 60. And in fact, each of the remaining ones is at 60 within this beat. So it's 40, 60, 60, 60. And then that sequence is going to repeat for the rest of the beats. So 40, 60, 60. Okay, so I have the sequence for the ARP mod laid in. Again, it's 40, 60, 60, 60, and then that pattern repeats. So now, with that in place, it sounds like this. And let me zero out this ARP mod, and, and then that way you can hear how it sounds with and without. Okay. All right, that's it for setting up the filter. Now let's go to the effects. So we want to add an EQ1. And for this one, we want to set the low shelf filter right around 175 hertz and give it a plus 3 dB boost. And then for the uh, filter 2 here, we're going to set that right around 550, just below 550, and give it a 4.5 dB boost. And then I zeroed out the resonance to make it broadband, to have a wide bandwidth. And then for filter 3, we're going to give a 5 dB boost just under 3 kilohertz. With zero resonance as well, or zero Q, to give it a wide bandwidth. And then finally, with the high shell filter, we're going to apply a minus 1.5 dB cut, just between 3 kilohertz and 5.5 kilohertz. this one we want to increase the resonance some. Setting the resonance on that one to 32. And then the resonance on 2 and 3 were 0. And then we did not change the, the default resonance for filter number 1. Alright, that takes care of the EQ1. Let's add a second EQ. And for this one we want to set the low shell filter giving a minus 3 dB cut between 100 and 175 hertz. And increasing resonance to 97. For filter 2, we want to apply a 1.5 dB boost, so plus 1.5 dB with 0 Q for a wide bandwidth. And that will be applied between 550 and 1 kilohertz. And for filter 3, we're going to set that all the way to the max here, 17.5 kilohertz. Give it a plus 10.5 dB boost and set the Q to 19.
And then finally, filter 4, we will apply a minus 2 dB cut, just under 5.5 kilohertz. Okay, so let me enable and disable each of the EQs. So here is no EQ, and then I'll apply EQ1, and then I will apply EQ2. Alright, so next I'm going to add a delay, and for this we want to set the cross feedback to zero, set the ratio to 50, the right sync set that to 1 8 dot, and then set the feedback to 49.5, and then I'll gradually bring the mix up to 26. Okay, next I'm going to add reverb, and for this we want to set the dry to 78, and I will make these changes as we go. So I'm going to set the dry to 78, the wet to 22.5, and then the only other change we will make is on the speed parameter, which we will lower to 37.5. So let me go ahead and apply those changes now. And that's the patch. So let me just play through the final version. I'll see you in the next video.